Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? I'm going to start this video a little differently by showing you the end result first because it will help you to understand what I'm building and why I'm do doing certain things as you watch me build it. After I converted this central closet in my daughter's house into a bedroom, she had no closet space at all in her bedroom. So I made these four cabinets to give her plenty of closet space. I made them out of red oak with white oak edge banding, and I think that's gonna look pretty nice. The cabinet on the left is the largest, and it has a set of drawers at the bottom, so it will be for hanging clothes that are not too long. Note how the grain flows continuously from the doors down to the drawer front. The next cabinet is a little narrower and runs all the way to the floor, so it will be good for longer clothes. I made these custom door handles out of scrap pieces of walnut that I had lying around my shop. The drawer cabinet sits under the window and has four drawers. For the drawer fronts, I had the grain run vertically to be consistent with the other cabinets, and the grain flows continuously from the top all the way down to the bottom, which gives it a nice look. The last cabinet sits up against the wall, so I made the handle differently on this one so that the handle would not collide with the wall. The video focuses primarily on the large cabinet with the two drawers and the smaller cabinet with four drawers because those are the most complicated to build. So let's head back to my workshop and get started. I've already cut the plywood sheets down the middle using my track saw to make them more manageable. Now I will clean up the factory edge and then cut them to width. I'm going to cut them to approximately 24 inches. This last piece is the door front for the narrow cabinet that goes against the wall, and it's about 21 inches wide. Now I'll square up one end and remove the factory edge, and then I'll cut them all to be 87 inches long. Those 9-inch cutoffs are pretty much the only waste portions in this project, but they will be useful for making any test cuts that I might need to make. Next, I'll cut a rabbet at the bottom end of the side pieces for the large cabinet. I'm cutting the rabbet into the side piece rather than the bottom piece because I want the veneered face of the plywood to run all the way to the top and not have any laminations exposed. Next, I'll measure where I want to cut the dado for the shelf. I'm measuring with a 3 and 3 16 inch offset to account for the distance between the edge of the router faceplate and the edge of the router bit. The downside of using a router for making these types of cuts is that it's more difficult to get repeatable cuts as opposed to using a router table or a table saw with a dado blade. But I have no other choice with such large pieces. I'll use one of those waste pieces to test the fit. The direction that you go with the router depends on where the fence is placed. I have the fence placed on my left, so I want to push the router away from me because of the direction of rotation of the router bit. The rotation of the bit will cause the router to pull tightly to the fence. If I were to pull the router toward me, the rotation of the bit would cause the router to pull away from the fence. Conversely, if I had the fence on my right, then I would want to be pulling the router toward me. And then I'll repeat this same set of cuts on the other side of the cabinet. Next, I'll cut the top and bottom and the two shelves. The cabinet is going to be 44 inches wide, so I'll cut these to be 43 and a quarter inches to account for the thickness of the plywood remaining in the dados on each side. Now it's ready to glue up. It's tricky to glue up something this large all alone, so I'm using these 90 degree corner brackets and some clamps to temporarily hold everything in place while I assemble it. I used an undersized 3 quarter inch plywood bit in my router, but the fit is pretty tight, so my dead blow mallet comes in handy to get everything in place.
I'll get the shelves clamped in place first, and then I'll deal with the top and bottom of the cabinet. I had cut a dado in the top and bottom of the drawer unit off camera so that I can slide in a divider between the two drawers. The bottom piece was hard to handle all alone, so I had my daughter help me. I suppose I could have used a couple of brad nails if I was really struggling because the sides of this cabinet will not be exposed, except for at the front. It was a tight fit for the drawer box divider, so my mallet came in handy. And then I added some clamping pressure to make sure that it remained fully seated. The other end was a lot easier to install. Next I'm going to cut some nailing strips. These will also add some stability to the cabinet. I will attach the nailing strips with glue and pocket screws. I'm not going to put a back on these cabinets. That will give me more room in the interior of the cabinet. While that is gluing up, I'll cut some edge banding using some white oak that I have on hand. I could have used red oak, but I didn't have any, and this will look nice, I think. I'm cutting the edge banding to be 3 8 of an inch thick, which is pretty thick, but I think that will make it look like an intentional design element, which it is. It will also give me some room to trim the doors if they end up being a little too wide. It's a lot of extra work to add edge banding like this rather than the thin iron-on edge banding, but I think this will look really nice. Now I'll glue on the edge banding and use these bandy clamps from Rockler that are really helpful for a task like this. have 14 of these bandy clamps, so I had to glue up the edge banding in stages while I worked on other things. After the glue had cured, I cut off the excess. While the other cabinets are gluing up, I'm over at the house to work on the base. The floor is not level at all, so I'll need to scribe the base to the floor. It's just sitting on shims right now so that the top is level. I want to have the cabinet sitting very close to the floor, so I'll use my compass to scribe the line fairly high. Then I'll disassemble the pieces of the base and cut along the lines with my jigsaw and then reassemble it. Now that the base is level, it will be simple to set the cabinets onto the base without having to shim anything. 
Now I'm going to temporarily install the three unfinished cabinets so that I can measure the opening for the drawers because nothing is square in this house, so it makes it risky to depend on measurements of the open space. and I've measured 25 and 3 quarter inches for the remaining cabinet. Now back at the workshop, I'll put on the first coat of finish. I'm using a water-based gloss finish from Total Boat for the first coat. I'm using a water-based finish because the hardwood floor has a water-based finish, so I think it's more likely to match. And there's the added benefit that the finish dries way faster than an oil-based finish. Now I'm going to cut the door for the narrow end cabinet. For every cut that I'm making, I'm subtracting 3 quarters of an inch to account for the edge banding that I will put on all sides. A quick test fit, and it looks close enough. It's hard to be sure when the edge banding isn't on yet. For the edge banding around the doors and drawer fronts, I will cut mitered corners so that it looks a little nicer. And when I run out of bandy clamps, I can resort to using my 24 inch clamps. When I cut the pieces for the doors for the other cabinets, I somehow lost the footage, so you didn't see the part where I marked them with a piece of tape to know how to line up the grain. Now I'm cutting those same pieces to width, and for the larger cabinets, I'm adding another piece of tape at the bottom so that I can match the drawer front to the correct door and to match the grain. Now I'll cut the doors to length, and that remaining piece will be used for the drawer front. To clean up the edge banding, I'm scraping off the excess to get it close in thickness to the plywood. You might be tempted to sand it off, but don't do that because the veneer on the plywood is ultra thin and it's too risky that you will sand the veneer off. Don't ask me how I know that. Now it's time to plan out the hinges. I want to carefully measure down from the top of each door and then I will transfer those same measurements to each cabinet by measuring down from the top of the cabinet. I'll use an awl to mark the center point to make it easier to get the tip of the Forstner bit in the right location. This requires a 35 millimeter hole, so I'm using a 1 and 3 8 inch Forstner bit, which is slightly smaller but almost the same size. 
These doors are pretty big to be drilling on a drill press, but I have a couple of stands set up to support the ends. It might have been easier to use a jig for a hand drill in this case, but I don't have one. Now I'll use a self-centering drill bit to drill the holes for the screws. The drill bit size is 7 64ths of an inch. I like to screw these in by hand so that I don't over tighten them or strip the screw head. I've removed the hinges and now it's time to apply the finish to the doors. But first I'll round over all the edges with a 16th inch round over bit and then I'll sand them lightly before applying the finish. Using a sprayer makes it pretty quick and it applies a nice even finish. While the finish is drying, I'll work on making the door and drawer handles with some pieces of walnut that are left over from some of my chessboards. I'm going to cut the pieces to be two inches wide. and then I'll set the fence to cut the handles to be one inch thick. Now at the router table, I'm using a one inch round over bit to round over the outside edge of the handles. That gives me a perfect semicircle on the edge that's facing you when you approach the door. Next, I'll put the flat edge down and use a 3 8 inch round nose bit to cut a groove for your fingers. I'll do this multiple times and cut away a small amount each time. I can carefully run it backward through the bit to clean out the wood chips. Next, I'll run it through the table saw to create the finger hold that I want. Now, I will apply the Total Boat satin finish to the doors and cabinets, as well as to the door handles. Now I'll attach the hinge clips to the cabinets by carefully measuring. The clips are adjustable to a point, but you want to try to get them positioned as accurately as possible.
I weighed each of the doors to know how many hinges I would need on each one. Each hinge can support up to three and a half kilograms, so I needed three hinges on each door, except for this heaviest door for the narrow cabinet that needed four hinges. Next, I'm cutting the material for the cabinet that will hold four drawers. Because this piece is smaller, I can cut the rabbits on my table saw, which is a lot easier to get repeatable results. In this case, I'm cutting the rabbits into the top and bottom pieces because the sides will not be exposed. I'm running the piece through the dado blade twice just to be sure they are cut with sufficient vertical pressure to get an even cut. It's typically at the start and the end of the cut where there was insufficient force applied. Now it's time for the glue up. This is a smaller cabinet so it's easier to get glued up. And I'm not going to attach a nailing strip because I'll just screw it into the two adjoining cabinets. Next, I'll cut all of the pieces for the drawer boxes from Baltic Birch. I'm using Baltic Birch because it is almost exactly a half an inch thick. I'm going to use the quarter, quarter, quarter method for the joinery, so it's important to have half inch material. I have the blade set a quarter of an inch away from my blade. The blade is exactly a quarter of an inch thick and a quarter of an inch high. This makes the cuts really easy after the setup is done. I'll start by cutting all of the dados into the side pieces. Next, I'll insert a quarter inch piece of MDF between the fence and the blade, and then I can cut quarter inch rabbits into the ends of the front and back pieces. Then I'll remove the strip of MDF to cut a quarter inch groove for the plywood bottom. I'm not using Baltic birch for the plywood bottoms, so the plywood will be a little undersized for the groove, but a little glue will hold them in place. So with that single setup, I can cut all of the joinery for the six drawers very efficiently. Next I'll cut the drawer bottoms and then proceed to glue everything up.
that joint fits perfectly and it will be really strong. Next, I'm going to drill some holes for shelf pins. So I'll use this spacer so that I can line up the holes at the front with the holes at the back. I wanna make sure I skip over where the hinge will be and I'll use this shelf pin jig from Milescraft to make it really quick. I drill each hole twice to make sure the bit goes all the way in and to clean out the wood chips. Next, I'll install the drawer slides according to the instructions. For the piece that goes in the cabinet, I will use a spacer to get them at the right height. And it fits perfectly. Next, I will do the same for the four drawers in the other cabinet. I'll use the same spacer for the bottom drawer. and then I'll use a spacer on top of the installed drawer for each of the other drawers. Next, I'll use this piece of plywood to select where I wanna cut the drawer fronts to get the nicest grain pattern. It's a little bit wasteful, but it doesn't waste that much to get the look that I want. And then I will cut the height of each piece, keeping in mind that everything will have edge banding. While those are gluing up, I will cut the drawer fronts for the two drawers at the bottom of the largest cabinet. The drawer boxes are recessed a bit when fully closed, so I'll use a block at the back to push them out so that I can use the double-sided tape method to attach the drawer fronts. First, I will drill some holes for the drawer fronts. I'm drilling 5 16 inch holes to give me some adjustability if needed. Now I will stick on the drawer front using some tape and some Starbond CA glue, and then I will screw it in place using a 1 8 inch spacer between the drawer front and the cabinet door.
Next, I'll scrape all the edge banding and then sand the drawer fronts. I use this burnisher to keep the scraper sharp. I'll prepare all of the holes for the drawer fronts and then screw them in place. I can remove each drawer and clamp the drawer front in place except for the one at the top. And then I'll use the double-sided tape method for that one. Now I'm back at the house and I can work on the final installation. Since this cabinet at the end will be blocking an outlet, I will add an outlet to the side of the cabinet and then plug that outlet into the one that is blocked without the need for any fancy wiring. Now I'll use my laser level to install the hanger rods. And now back at the workshop, I will install the handles for the drawers, and then I'll take this final cabinet to the house to install.
Luckily it fit because I was worried that it was going to be too tight and that I would have to resort to my belt sander to get it to fit. I clamped it in place to get the front edges to line up and then I screwed it in place. Now I have the laser level set so that I can get all the handles lined up. For this door at the end, I just have a simple strip of walnut that I'll attach to the edge of the door so that the handle won't hit the wall. For the remaining handles, I'll apply a bit of Starbond CA glue just to hold them in place temporarily, and then I'll screw them in. I made these little blocks of wood with a semicircle cut out to help with the clamping. And then I have one last piece of trim to install over the window. And that's it. It took me about three weeks to complete this project. So I gotta ask, would you make it? <laughs>